All right, let me open up Twitch, make sure audio is working, and then we will start the start the game. Hello, hello everyone. My name is DeFable, and welcome back to Crash 4. It's about time. I am very excited about as today time. I'm going to attempt to finish this damn game. Shut up, Echo. There we go. <laughs> I am joined by my best and closest friend, Thomas. Say hello, my friend. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? And yeah, that's basically the long and short of it. I want to finish this game, because I'm very close to getting the next game uh, set up and ready to run. And ready to play, so... Yeah, let's hop into it. Uh, do tell us more about how you want it back. Oh, you know it, baby. <laughs> oh, my. I didn't know you had it. But I have some really cool stories to tell you guys. So in my free time, I have been listening to kind of murder mysteries slash paranormal slash not so paranormal kind of uh, spooky stories. And I have a couple of them I would like to uh, share with you guys and what you guys and would like to share my thoughts on. So the first one I want to talk about is is called pen pal um pen pal is a very long story Whoa! from the r slash not don't sleep uh you subreddit the others after we've explored now after which way are the food trucks can aku aku even eat i never thought of that um <laughs> He's a mask. Yeah, he's literally a a version. I'm assuming who Plank is actually based on him because it's the same feather colors too. How is this game running flawlessly on my PS4 Pro? This is incredible. Actually, I'm not going to talk about Pen Pal because Creepcast did a video on that, and I'd rather you guys just support Creepcast. They're a podcast I watch that is hosted by. Two of the most incredible horror content creators I know, uh, Wendigoon and Papa Meat, Meat Canyon himself. <laughs> Fuck, almost made it. <sighs> oh shit, hold on. See, the problem with what, listening to stories is I don't very much grasp them as much as I would like to. Okay. <laughs> No! You fucker. There's a lot to remember. Give me one second, I'll start going into the story. But, um. Ooh! Okay, that's gonna be difficult to time. God damn it! There we go. Done. See, I thought I could do that in all one in one fell sequence, but it you know, didn't work that way. Oh, I see. So we're gonna mess with the different mechanics here. Oh. Oh, sweet mother. God damn it. Ah, my neck is hot. Skim the beak. No, you fucker. Go. There we go. Haha. -ha. There we go. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I keep forgetting, Crash can't grab platforms. Huh? 
skiddly beat and skiddly dee. Made it. Hell yeah. Ooh. Hey. No. Oh, you fucker. Oh, hi, Shadow. What you doing, buddy? Please don't knock over my starry. I just got it. Alright, anyway, as for Scary Story, this takes place in India, I think. Um, the, I didn't really listen to the beginning of it in terms of the location, because I was playing Power World admittedly, and yes, there will be more Power World streams very soon. Fuck Nintendo, by the way. Um, God damn it, game you a cunt. Anyway, um, there's this woman named Subitra, who had just had a child. She was very happy. Her and her husband were very excited to have their very first baby. She had always wanted to be a mother, right? So when she had her baby, she would keep the baby attached to her physically. Like, she would have her have it them strapped to her chest, right? And so she would spend all day, every day, spending time with this baby, as you do as a new mother, I would assume. Um, yeah, but one day, and anytime she wasn't Anytime she wasn't doing any cleaning or anything, she would spend time with the baby, while rubbing its head, as well as patting its feet, which I just think is fucking adorable, by the way. Um... Anyway! <laughs> One day, she was playing with her child, but out of nowhere, she started to shake, and she went into a sort of trance where her eyes rolled to the back of her head, and her fingers would twist so intently that they almost broke. This became... it lasted for about 10 minutes, and then it stopped. This would become a recurring theme for some reason. This became such an, a, a very well-known phenomenon in this village to this woman that they would, they would automatically know that, hey, she's under a trance again, she'll be fine, right? Well, one day when she was in the trance, she did something unusual. She actually said something, and as it turns out, what she said was... I will die in three days. Sure enough, three days later, out of paranoia, understandable paranoia, my dad, she avoided doing anything that could cause her any harm, anything that could cause an accident. So cleaning, cooking, you know, anything that would force her to be in contact with stuff that would cause her physical harm. It was mid-afternoon, and her family, her and her family were, of course, nervous. They were trying to make sure it didn't happen again. And so they were just waiting. About midway through the day, they finally were able to relax. Um, so Savitri went outside. Oh shit. To see, to get some fresh air and to say hi to her friend who she saw across the street. How the fuck are you supposed to do that? Well, that was a bad idea. Because when she went outside, she went into another trance. This trance was very different. It was way more intense. The shakes were to the point where she was literally having a seizure. Her fingers were actually breaking this time. And understandably, her friends and her family were freaking out. At first, not so much because they're like, okay, the trance is normal. This is, you know, a usual thing for her. But then, her husband tried to reach out to her, to which she freaked out. She ran away, ran out into the village. And out of nowhere, the shaking stopped. Like, she just stopped moving. They got what they call the medicine man to look at her, and it turns out she had not been breathing for 20 minutes. So, obviously the husband falls to his knees, grieves his lost wife, as well as the mother of his child. But what was even weirder was... Oh, shit. There we go. Was the next day, having been dead for 20 hours... When the medical doctor went to look at her, or medicine man went to look at her, her eyes, even though closed, you could tell, were darting back and forth. And so it was like her eyes, she was having a seizure with her eyes closed. All of a sudden, she sprung back to life. And the doctor, with a big smile on his face, said, she's a miracle, she's come back from the dead. Unfortunately, it wasn't that easy, because now there was a really strange side effect to what she had gone through. 
she no longer knew who she was. She thought she was this other person, let's call her Lily, for the sake of simplicity, and thought that she was murdered by her mother, her, her in-laws, even though they were nice people to her. And she mentioned that her husband wasn't her husband, it was another man. So, time goes by, and she has her own room now, because again, she doesn't trust this family- she doesn't trust her family because she doesn't think they're her family. She doesn't trust her husband. The whole family assumed it was a psychosis, or she may have suffered brain damage from being dead for 20 minutes. Not 20 hours, sorry, 20 minutes. Well, a guy, nicely dressed, random guy knocks- walks up to their door, knocks on the door, and introduces himself as Shivati. He specifically asks, does anyone know in this- does anyone know if anyone in this village has been acting strange, a young woman? Which, Savitri's husband, of course, was shaken up, like, what? How did you know? And he's like, hold on a second, I'll be right back. So he goes to get his wife, Savitri, and tells her of the man who came to the door. She had a big smile on her face and jumped into the guy's arms as if she was married to him in reality. So it, you're given this impression by this point in the story that when she died, something, someone else took over her body who had recently died as well. And that's about as far as I got in it, was that he, the guy's taken back because he didn't expect it and he did, that it's not his wife, so it threw him off. But yeah, that's, that's about as far in the story as I was able to get before I had to start the stream. That's also why I was a few minutes late, because I was wanting to get the conclusion of that, but the um, story had quite a bit left. So yeah, what I think happened is that she was possessed. By this point, the whole village, by the way, is freaking out, thinking they're going to be possessed next. Now that Savitri... Be, when Savitri died, when she was pronounced dead, they thought that whatever possessed her was now in the village going to kill them. Yeah, it's a fucking interesting story. There's a bunch of them I've been listening to today. There we go. Hey. Get over there, damn it! There we go. God damn. <laughs> I ran right into the explosive crate. Oh. What do you think of the story, Thomas? Oh no, did we lose him to the void again? Eh, go. Got it. Thomas. Oh no. Wait, hold on, let me see something. Did he go poof? Yeah, he went poof. Okay. Just make sure it wasn't my internet messing up again. Mm. <laughs> Fuck it, we're not going after crates. Welcome, Bake. Did you hear any of the story? Yeah, I was, I was listening. And mm -hmm. then I was called up to the ticker. What'd you think? Yeah, play an interesting story. I honestly think she was possessed. And I th like I said, I think when she died, someone else who had died possessed her body. Yeah, yeah that would be a possibility. Hmm. I'm also wondering what the fuck caused the trance. What caused the trances? Trances. Because it doesn't seem like the the entity is demonic in nature, but it did. The way that her body contorted and everything would give that impression. Ah, uh, go away! 
Damn it! <laughs> Dingo Dell, you're too thick! Why did he not fucking suck up the goddamn crate? Also, why does Nitro- why do explosive crates now kill me in one hit when I have Aku Aku? That makes no fucking sense. Every other game, the mask gives you an extra hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 